Welcome back to the One Source Medicine four-part series on enzymes. Last time we established that enzymes are three-dimensional biological macromolecules capable of optimizing local environments to speed up chemical reactions. But what does it mean to optimize the environment for a given reaction? Well, in order for two molecules to react with one another, a few preconditions must be coincident. First, the substrate molecules need to exist in the same place at the same time. Secondly, the reaction must be thermodynamically favorable, meaning the cumulative Gibbs free energy of the products must be lower than that of the reactants so that delta G is negative. Finally, the local energy maximum of the transition state must be overcome so as to realize the energy payoff implicit to the formation of the more thermodynamically stable products. Since this is a video focusing on enzymes, you may have already guessed that our protagonists are capable of facilitating all three of these conditions. Well guess what, future Dr. Smarty Pants? You are an idiot. Now that I have your undivided attention, it's time for some real talk. Conflating thermodynamic and kinetic aspects of chemical and biological processes is one of the most devastating mistakes you can make on the MCAT. Thermodynamic properties are concerned only with how much energy will be produced or used up over the course of a reaction, and so really only care about the net energy difference between reactants and products. This is why you'll frequently hear instructors call thermodynamic equations state functions, because they describe the difference between the beginning state and the ending state, but are agnostic to everything in between. So thermodynamics are great for determining the favorability of a reaction, but complete garbage when it comes to discussing how long the reaction will take. Kinetics, on the other hand, examine the path taken from reactants to products. Just like when you're driving a car from point A to point B, the path chosen has far more effect on how long the trip takes than the straight line distance between the two points. So, by investigating the energy profile of the path taken, kinetic functions can determine the rate at which a given product will be synthesized as a function of 1. the probability of both reactants coming together in the same place at the same time, and 2. the energy necessary to overcome the transition state. If seeing these last two points pop up has thrown you into a state of deja vu, then props to you for paying attention. You have, in fact, seen these before in the context of our three preconditions necessary for a chemical reaction to take place. Upon revisiting these conditions, you'll notice that numbers 1 and 3 are absolutely kinetically oriented factors, while number 2 falls under the umbrella of thermodynamic state functions. But why do we care? What does this have to do with enzymes anyway? Well, as you'll learn in our series dedicated to thermodynamics, state functions such as enthalpy and Gibbs free energy are fundamental properties of their respective molecules which cannot be manipulated by enzymes. So that brings us to the elephant in the room. Remember that time I called you an idiot? Well, debatably it was rude, hurtful, and uncalled for. However, you were jumping to the premature conclusion that enzymes are capable of facilitating all three of these conditions when, in reality, enzymes are exclusively kinetic creatures. This means they are amazing at bringing substrate molecules together to occupy the same space at the same time, and while they lack the ability to redefine delta G between reactants and products, they are wizards when it comes to lowering the energy barrier imposed by the transition state. Enzymes are great at bringing together fiercely independent molecules to go on mutually beneficial journeys. And though they lack the ability to move the Shire closer to Mordor, for instance, enzymes are fully capable of facilitating these quests by, say, throwing down you shall not pass ultimatums in 1v1 showdowns against rate-limiting barriers and liberating fellowships of substrates to skirt beneath the activation energy mountains obstructing their pursuit of stability. And, as if all that weren't enough, chemical catalysts, enzymes included, wrap up each chemical reaction in true Gandalfian fashion by being completely regenerated in the end. Be sure to tune in for part 3, in which we'll discuss the specifics of enzyme kinetics including michaelis mitten plots, inhibitors, and the infamous Lineweaver-Burke double reciprocal dumpster fire. Thanks for watching.